Douglas or Hofstadter, I am a strange loop. Dive into the extraordinary world of loops and consciousness as the book, I Am a Strange Loop, by Douglas R. Hofstadter unravels the mysteries of human self, the connection between mathematics, philosophy, and consciousness. Discover the fascinating concept of a strange loop, an abstract phenomenon that links different levels of abstraction and has a significant impact on human self-awareness. This summary will explore the idea of how our brains form our sense of self and challenge commonly held beliefs about the existence of something beyond our physical brains. Delve into the intriguing aspects of symbolism, artificial intelligence, and the varying degree of self-awareness among living beings. Embracing our loopy existence. The concept of loops and strange loops is all around us, from video feedback to mathematics, philosophy, and even our own consciousness. In this book, Hofstadter explores the intrinsic nature of loops in our world, and how they can be both benign and threatening to our understanding of reality. The fear of loops is a strange, yet common phenomenon. From the hesitation to close the video feedback loop of a camera to the discovery of the loop that ultimately dismantled Bertrand Russell's reduction of mathematics to logic, loops seem ominous and illicit. Author and mathematician, Douglas Hofstadter delves into this concept of strange loops, which connects one level of abstraction to another and ultimately returns to its starting point. From M. C. Escher's lithographs, to the workings of a touring machine, Hofstadter illustrates how loops manifest in the world around us. He explains how loops, though seemingly threatening, are a natural feature of our reality. Furthermore, he argues that loops are necessary for our understanding of causality, giving rise to our concepts of self and consciousness. Though difficult to grasp, the concept of strange loops is essential to understanding the nature of our being. Hofstadter's book challenges readers to accept the intricate, self-recursive nature of our existence, rather than recoiling from it in fear. Loops, whether they exist in our computers, our mathematics, or ourselves, are a fundamental part of our reality, one that we should embrace, not fear. Self as Brain's Representation The human brain possesses the ability to model itself and others through a rich symbolic system. One such model is the self-schema, which comprises an individual's attributes, memories, and judgments. Despite various philosophies and scientific beliefs arguing for a non-physical self, substantial evidence suggests otherwise. The emergence of consciousness is a property of the brain's organization and not an extra feature. The self is simply a representation of the brain. In the human brain lies a remarkable ability to create models of itself and others by means of a rich symbolic system. Every individual possesses a personal model known as the self-schema. It includes information such as personal attributes, memories, likes, and dislikes, all of which are available within the brain's symbolic system, albeit not simultaneously. Although this self-schema is remarkably stable, it is also subject to change through conscious effort. However, even when people's views of themselves conflict with reality, it remains challenging to change. The self-schema's representation of self leads to the question of whether there is a physical or non-physical self. Despite many prominent philosophers and scientists believing in non-physical self, influential research findings have disclaimed this belief. The notion of Cartesian dualism, developed by Descartes, talks about a non-physical substance that surrounds the physical brain, but its existence has not been discovered despite extensive research. According to this belief, the purely physical brain can have a self, and other forms of dualism recognize the mind and self as non-physical. However, evidence supports the belief that the self emerges from the pattern of brain organization itself. The idea of self as a separate entity that coexists with the body is not scientifically tenable and is inconsistent with what we know about the brain's functioning. The emergence of consciousness is a property of the structure and organization of the brain, rather than the presence of any extra feature. To explain further, structural organization follows with an analogy of a fast car, when shopping for a car, an individual's knowledge about cars is a representation of their knowledge about cars acquired from their environment and past experiences. By buying a four-cylinder car, 
the buyer can still enjoy racing, but it is not as satisfying as racing a 10-cylinder car. They might want to modify or improve the performance of their car. However, the 10-cylinder car's power is not magical or mystical, it is just an element of the car's physical build. Similarly, the self-schema is derived from the layout of the brain and its symbolic structure, making it a representation of the brain. The Paradox of the Self The concept of the self as an illusion that is not causally involved in human lives is a misunderstanding. Although the self is not identical to the brain, it is still real and is a clever concept used by human brains. Like other concepts such as countries and trade policies, the self is an abstraction that is no less real than a proton. Human beings use many concepts that cannot be reduced to physics, and the self is no exception. The use of these concepts helps humans navigate and understand the world, even if they are not entirely accurate. The self is a paradox because it is both real and not reducible to physics, but living with paradox is a fundamental aspect of being human. The representation of self in the physical world. The concept of self is a representation that only physical substrates can contain. The self, being a representation, is only found in complex physical structures like the brain and nervous system. There is a possibility that animals like certain dolphins, orangutans, chimps, elephants, and dogs, to some extent, recognize themselves in mirrors. Empathy, a trick of representation, allows human beings to store the contents of another's mind, which increases the size of their soul, and creates a kind of immortality. However, machines like computers, which have quintessential symbolic systems, are not smart enough to create representations of themselves. Having explored the intricacies of human self-awareness and Douglas R. Hofstadter's revolutionary, strange loop concept, it becomes apparent that our consciousness emerges from the remarkable patterns and organization of our brains. Despite our fascination with the idea of an ethereal, non-physical component to ourselves, the evidence lies solely in the physical brain. Human beings are capable of forming sophisticated symbolic systems to represent their thoughts, feelings, and selves, allowing us to empathize with others and increase the size of our souls. And in this entwined existence, a form of immortality can be found through the sharing and preservation of our experiences and ideas, in the collective minds of those around us. This thought-provoking book embarks on an unforgettable journey through the realm of consciousness, forcing a re-evaluation of our understanding of human self.